This is when you're supposed to start the show. Oh, right, 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 right. Okay, welcome. Look, it's, it's group chat after dark. Another episode. I I'm see, Beaver. You've changed your decor there in the background. I have. Yeah. I've updated. Joker is I've, gone. I've stepped it up a little. I've, I've put up the golf and, I, and I've lit up things. And uh, yeah. And you have a B there for bathroom. That's good. It's, it's B for Beaver ah. or Beavis or Banner. Or Bernard. Or Bernard. Or for any of the other names, the B names that I'm sure I'm forgetting. I am those names. And you are Maggle. Yes. And we're back. Group chat after dark. We're waking you up because the group chat, it's popping it's off right bitch, now. And I'm back. And we're back. This episode of Group Chat After Dark is about rewatch podcasts. They're very yeah. big right now. Yeah, because nobody else has anything to do but watch stuff that happened 10 years ago. Even more than 10 years ago. The other day, I watched the 1995 NFC Championship game on TV. I bet that was just awful. It, it was in that little letter box, so you could only watch it on like this big of a screen. Yeah. Um, it's what we in the business call four by three. Ah, nice. Yes. Um, well, they're huge right now because, yeah, nobody's got anything to do. And they got to keep working. And I guess you get a lot of revenue from podcast ads. I, I don't know. How much money do we get from our ads? Oh, well, it's funny you mentioned that Bombas is uh, paying us a whopping sum of $0 for mentioning every time you buy a pair of Bombas, uh, they take one and donate one to homeless shelters where socks are the most requested item. I don't know if you knew that. I did know that. and But I don't know that you knew. If you knew that if you use the code GCHAD, uh, at, when you check out Bombas, you get absolutely no discount and nothing happens. Correct. Yeah, just click the microphone there at the top left and enter the code GCHAD and it will tell you this promo code is not valid. That is true. And I think that is official now that Bombas has been mentioned on every episode of Group Chat After Dark. Not that there's been that many, but... Well, we got to get the plugs in. Got to get the plugs in. Um, well, this whole thing started because we got sent a link to Zach to the Future which is the new uh, Saved by the Bell uh, rewatch podcast with uh, Mark Paul Gossler, who pay- played uh, Zach Morris. And the guy not from listen to it yet. Zach Morris is trash. Zach Morris is trash. Yes, I saw he is the, is he the, the co-host or is he just producing it? Yeah, he is the co-host. He's okay. kind of like driving the ship. And nice. Zach is there to provide the inside scoop. Yeah, just be arm candy and yeah. Um, so, I see your, your GChat MVP trophy there in the background. Yes, it's right there. <laughs> anyway, Beaver won that from uh, continuing the fire of group chat, no matter what. Even if none of us had responded for 16 days straight, he was always there yeah. to start it back up. Hey, I, you know, somebody's got to stoke the fires of friendship. Yeah, it's true. Um, so... In the vein of rewatch podcasts and for lack of show content for the month of August, we have decided that we are going to do a rewatch of one of our classic, probably most widely distributed uh, videos from Ride That Donkey Production, the mostly untrue Hollywood story of Todd Scott. Yeah, it's also the longest video, I think, in RTD history. Definitely the longest I have tried and failed many times to impart the knowledge that shorter is better when, when it comes to these style videos. Um, but I think, I think we've, we've successfully, you know, started cropping them down the, the longer they've gone, but this was like the first big one. As, as you see, I'm going to refer to my notes here that I have printed out because I'm very official. He's professional. That's in the business. We call that show notes. Those are my show notes, my, my prep, my research. Um, this was written and directed by none other than Mr. Corey Maddox. And he was really stoked to do this uh, video about Todd. And I don't know if you were, this was done in 2011. I don't know if you recall what else was going on in 2011 that sparked this. I don't. Uh, I have no clue. It occurred to me during my rewatch that this was all because of Charlie Sheen. This was during uh, the Charlie Sheen meltdown. 
uh, the tiger blood and winning and all that. Corey was a huge follower of Charlie Sheen's uh, public winning, whatever it was. Yeah. He, he loved that. He would tell me frequently, we were roommates at the time and he would tell me, did you hear what Charlie Sheen did today? Did you hear what he did? Like he, he loved all the updates from Charlie Sheen. Uh, and I think that inspired him to write. I, that was a portion of history that I had totally forgotten about. I, it had it fallen. I, I'd, forgotten about it over the years too but as i was watching it uh i actually look back at like the facebook post of when we actually like first published it and it was or actually i made a, a facebook post from the ride that donkey page that announced it and it was all about uh it was charlie sheen references pertaining to todd um so yeah this was basically just uh, a charlie sheen ripoff um and this was actually another interesting tidbit was this was our first full hd project like we we've never See, i didn't know that either but yeah yeah this it was this uh, was a first for a lot of things because this was your first appearance. it was it yeah. was and i did not realize but it took us about i'd say at least five hours to shoot the whole thing we were there well and we didn't even shoot the whole thing at one that's right one night because uh we had a, another talking head that we couldn't do so it was the the initial shoot was you Corey, todd and i so we shot those four parts all in one night and then we did dustin's a, a few days later whenever he could make it to roanoke that's right and uh so we didn't even get to shoot the whole thing in one day but yeah that was i mean it was it was a huge undertaking because i was working in production and i got all this i got access to all this gear that i could use and you know stuff that i could never afford on my own so i had a whole bunch of a whole truck full of stuff that we could use and we were like well we got to do something so we did this and yeah so that and as i've noticed in my rewatch there are so many editing mistakes <laughs> so many uh just just because it was all green screen and everything i've noticed so much stuff that i you know even when i thought i knew what i was doing back then now it's like wow this is very amateur I'm not even going to point out all the editing mistakes. I might have to do a couple, but there's too many that I, I, I was like, that's not what this is about. So well, as a casual, just as doing a casual a blanket, viewer, I didn't catch any of those. So I thought most people, job. yeah, most people probably wouldn't, but it's stuff that drives me nuts. And I, like I say, I'm making a blanket statement at the beginning. There's a lot of mistakes in this thing. And I'll touch on some of the more egregious examples as we go. Yeah, I'll touch on my performance as well, because it has gotten <laughs> better over the years, so, given that this was the first one. so Yeah, this was your first, because I don't even think Corey and I had known you that long, but I think he met you, and it was right about, you know, it was a few weeks later that he was writing this, and he was like, well, we've got to put LaFawn in it. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah. yeah. Um we well, rushed to release this on March 25th of 2011. Uh, hence a lot of my mistakes because I was rushing to complete this project. And it's like, what, 12 minutes? That, or 10 and some change, I think, something like that. It is, it is 12 minutes and 11 seconds from oh. Bell to Bell. So. Okay, I stopped watching at the credits, so that's probably why. Yeah, yeah, for the, it, that's the entire running time of the, uh, of the thing. So, yeah, I was rushing to get it done because I was going out of town the weekend we were releasing it so i was i was trying to get it done before i left and uh yeah so how do you feel would you have anything to add before we get into the actual video itself uh, well i guess we should talk about the show that inspired the format yes. so back in the day well i guess i i was reading over your notes and you'd noted that it's still technically in existence well, I, yeah, because I looked it up. Uh, I wanted to see. I, I, I have not seen an E! True Hollywood story in a very mm. long time or even seen it advertised. Uh, so apparently it's, I guess it's been on hiatus, but it's coming back, uh, according to the website. Um, it first debuted in 1996, wow. uh, which is a very long time ago now. Uh, there were 17 seasons and 501 episodes, but it's still listed as 1996 to present on the wikipedia because that's nice. you know that's a great place to get information yeah uh but the actual e news website had it it, it was said returning soon it didn't have a date but it had a little trailer for a new batch of e true hollywood stories um so if you had to pick one person from we'll say when did we make this 2011 
Correct. So from 2011 to now, you pick one person that you want to see an E! True Hollywood story for. Who would you pick? Kevin Smith. Nice. <laughs> I don't know. That would the first be, person that came to mind. No, that would be an interesting one, I think. I don't know. He's, he's not really controversial, I don't think. Like, he hasn't, like, other than, well, I mean, I guess, like, it'd probably be a lot about, like, his weight and, like, his, his health and all that. Well, and I guess they might talk about, like, how he got his start because it's outside yeah. of the norm oh, of Hollywood. Definitely. Yeah, that would, the, the whole clerk's story would be, you know, highlighted. And I think it would go on about, you know, because obviously, if you don't know him now, it's like people said, like, oh, that's a guy who used to be really fat. And now <laughs> yeah. he's really skinny. Um, but what about you? Who would you pick? That's a good one. Reggie I'm not Miller? sure. Not Reggie Miller. No, he's, I mean, his story's been told. He's got, an, he's got a 30 for 30 about him. But I would probably say, did they do one on Heath Ledger? Because that would be one I would pick. I don't know. If they did, I didn't see it. Because I, I used to watch them a lot, like, after school and stuff. Like I, They were always they on at random times. Yeah, like they two would run like on back a Saturday. to back. Yeah. The only one I can really – I remember watching um, one about Phil Hartman. It was mm-hmm. really sad. Um, and that's the only one I can really remember right off the top of my head. But I th- Yeah, I think I would pick Heath Ledger at, or maybe Joaquin Phoenix oh. because his story is so – interesting and both actors that have played the joker i'm noticing a theme here that that was unintentional but you're (laughs) you're right okay well yes this was inspired by a true hollywood story apparently it's coming back check e's website if you want more information sure yeah i I think it's but it's a channel you can get on some cable providers i do not get it uh currently but i think we get it again i think they added it back to uh or added it to youtube tv i think i've seen it recently nice i know as a matter of fact i know i have because my wife was watching parks and rec on there or something one day it was like it 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 runs syndicated tv shows too there was something she was watching on there it might not have been parks and rec but it was something like that interesting yeah they're bringing the reality genre now but uh speaking of reality uh, this this film the mostly untrue hollywood story of todd scott was not factual uh let's throw that out there uh now, now there are a lot of elements there are a lot of borrowed elements of truth but not necessarily things that happened to todd like there's a lot of and i've got a couple of those in my notes like timestamps for like stories that happened to somebody else that we threw in to make it i don't know to spice it up or to just just kind of inside jokes there's a lot of like easter eggs and inside jokes in here <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll talk about that so I say, uh, let's jump into it. Um, so the first timestamp I have is at three seconds, and it's about the theme song, uh, uh, yeah. which of course is "Take Me Home Tonight" by Eddie Money, and I don't remember why. <laughs> so uh, I remember um, we. So our our group chat uh, that inspired this podcast is avid Xbox Live uh, aficionados. And we used to play the uh, OG Red Dead, uh, Red Dead Redemption. That's it, Red Dead Redemption, uh, <laughs> online. And uh, for some reason, every time Todd plays Xbox, you can hear whatever is going on in the room with him <laughs> through his microphone uh, into the headset. So uh, one day he was playing with us and we heard music and we were like, what are you listening to? He was listening to Eddie Money for some reason. <laughs> um, apparently, he used to surf iTunes and just listen to random songs that he would find. And that night was Eddie Money, uh, Take Me Home Tonight. And He used uh, to troll iTunes a lot. He was always telling me about stuff on iTunes. It was yeah, always yeah. late at night, like yeah. really like 12, 12 midnight to like 2 a.m. But yeah, Eddie Money was on there. Um so that was that was where it came from. We were we were playing Xbox and we heard it, and he's like, "Oh, I'm just listening to Eddie Money, and it's really good." <laughs> and now, of course, when this was done, Eddie Money was still with us. He has since passed. So yeah, it's sad. R.I.P. Eddie. Yeah. Um, thank you for the music and thanks for not suing us. Um, that's right. That's right. Yeah, we've had other videos. Uh, so if if uh, our listeners are out of there in Germany, um, this video is unavailable <laughs> for you. So we apologize. Yeah. 
Yeah, a lot of our videos are unavailable in Germany <laughs> for some reason, one reason or another. Um, so yeah, sorry you can't watch this if you're listening in Germany. But if that's the case, you probably aren't listening to the podcast either. Um, yeah, that's so. that's the origins of the Eddie Money song. Okay. So All right. uh, I also had one in between there. Okay. Uh, at 39 seconds, the narrator talks about Todd having a taste for chocolate milk as a child. That is factually inaccurate. <laughs> well, <laughs> I know what you're going to say. Uh, as you know, Todd has claimed for years to be lactose intolerant. <laughs> However, every single day when we were in high school, he would always get a, a jug of Nestle Quick chocolate milk. And then he would always claim that it made his belly hurt, and that's why he would go to home. He would leave after lunch. Uh, but he, you know, so I don't know. Maybe he is lactose intolerant. I do know that if I haven't had milk in a very long time and I drink milk, if I drink a big glass of milk and it's been, you know, a few months since I'd done that, it does hurt my belly. But uh, I don't think I've had cow's milk, like, from a glass in probably a year plus. I made some chocolate milk with some 2% milk just the other day because there was syrup and I didn't, I was like, I want something. I just don't want water. So I made some chocolate milk. <laughs> nice. But yeah, so it, it was true. I don't know if he did when he was a little kid. I don't remember him drinking a lot of chocolate milk, but this was all just made up. You know, uh, well, yeah, and the, the, uh, the photos there of Todd, there's only, I think you <laughs> yeah. go through three or four photos. Those are all stock photos. Yes. Yeah. They're not even stock photos. This is how ghetto I was. Is I re I just googled <laughs> babies, like blonde headed babies, to and and there's one that kind of looks like Todd. But yeah, there is. Yeah, actually. they're they're just ripped off the you know Google. So that that I'm sure that's some sort of uh violation there as well. But hey, you know, don't put your stuff on the internet if you don't want some weird guy to pull them off. Yeah, exactly. Um, yes, I have. So going back to the narrator. Um, you'll notice that this narrator is really good. Uh, <laughs> it's, it is not, if you're listening to the podcast, if you've seen any of the other videos, you're going to, Hey, that doesn't sound like any of the guys. That's because it's not, this was actually <laughs> voiced by a professional voice actor. Um, that I got through a website. I believe I use voices.com. Um, uh, because initially Corey was recording. He had, we'd written all the voiceover lines and Corey recorded the lines for the voiceover in my closet, uh, <laughs> at our townhouse. Um, and he was, he was trying and I, and I, I think at the time that he thought I was like ragged on him because I was like, no, it's, this isn't working. And, um, I, I, my, I pointed out, I was like, see, it, like, don't, don't think that I'm ragging on you because I'm saying your voice isn't good. You could think that if I was saying that, and then I was like, let me do it. I was like, <laughs> I don't have a voiceover voice either. Like, I, I just don't. If I did, I would be sitting here doing voiceovers all day because I think that's got to be easy money, but it's probably not. But I looked into how we could get a professional voice actor, and that was, and, and basically you would just put up like a sample of the script, and people would just send you a demo. Oh, um, wow. They would, yeah. So it was like I put up a page of the script. Um, and we got, I don't know how many, like, it was basically kind of like an Uber type thing. You know, it was like you, you did, you know, through voices.com, you could take like jobs Fiber. wherever you wanted. Yeah. yeah. And you see, and this was, I think pre Fiverr. I don't know how old it is, but yeah, it was basically like, here's the job. Here's how many pages. Um, and I think the, the minimum you could pay was a hundred dollars. <laughs> so I spent $100 to have this done, uh, <laughs> And we got so many, and we picked this guy, and he actually had, um, he sent me, like, his voiceover demo, and he'd done, like, voiceovers for, like, the sci-fi channel, and done, like, he had done, he'd done a lot of stuff. Wow. And, uh, he and I communicated back and forth, you know, I picked him for the job and everything, and we, we took care of all of it, and I, I asked him at the end, I was like, I just, I gotta know, uh, why did you, why did you want to do this out of all the, you know, like, this is just a silly parody type thing. And, uh, he's like, why, why this? And he goes, I don't know. It just seemed like it would be a lot of fun. So, <laughs> and I, unfortunately, even though 
and I've got this in my notes, he's credited at the end, but it is a face, a, a false name that we made up for, you know, he's, he's kind of a catch-all character. He still um, didn't get his money. So. <laughs> he got his money. He got paid. But uh, he's not actually credited. And I, I don't know. Maybe I still have the emails from however long ago. I want to say his name was Dan, but I'm, that's it's been so long. He definitely but, put uh, this on his resume. <laughs> I'm sure he, he did. Done. It was it was he did a fantastic job, and so this just from right out right off the bat, you can tell like oh this is not their normal <laughs> schlock. <laughs> it, like it this, really, it this really feels polished. Stepped it up a, a quite a bit. Yeah, there's like background music, like it's obviously done. You know, I mocked or mimicked as much as I could the style of a true Hollywood story with the pictures to music and all you know the, the transitioning and everything. Um, but yeah, like you 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 hear that voiceover and it's like, oh, this this is like a real video. This is <laughs> this isn't like something they made, uh, you know, on a flip cam or something. So so yeah, so that that I did not know a lot of that stuff. So that's even new for me. Watch yeah, because you. Again. This was this was pre, you know. This was I don't even think we had smartphones during this time. No, we didn't. So we, we had weren't flip phones. Yeah, we weren't uh, in in communication every day like we are now. So yeah, you you and you were brand new. I wasn't sharing, you know, how the sausage pre, was made with you. Pre G chat. <laughs> pre G chat. <laughs> so yeah. I thought we could talk about at one minute and one second. That's core. I think that's Corey's first line in the in the video. Uh. And you can see what his favorite baseball team is. Um, unfortunately, it's the Cubs. Um, Why unfortunately? Uh, well, they, they tend to lose quite a bit. How dare you? They've won a World Series recently. Yes, recently they have. However, before that, it was like 108 years. Yeah, it's, it's historical. They're a historical team. Well, Corey, Corey loves the Cubs, and we are all sad for him because yep. they are the lovable losers. That is false. Although, now that you mention it, I don't really know that I ever really paid attention that he has on a Cubs hat and a Cubs shirt. Yes. Yeah, his favorite player of all time is Harry Carey. <laughs> he... <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, the next thing that we wanted to talk about was the first day of school, of kindergarten for you all, <laughs> which... Is actually a true story. I I, I think I wasn't there, so uh, you, yeah, you to... were. That was back when you were dead. Actually, when you were in kindergarten, I may have been dead. Yeah, I think so. Because what are you five when you're in kindergarten? Yeah. How old are you? Twenty. Oh, I'm thirty now. Oh, uh, okay. You you might have been alive. You might have been alive. Yeah, because I'm I'm not yet thirty five. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So you you were probably alive. Okay. Um. Yes, this is a story. That has been told to death. Uh, I will just uh, basically the the story that I tell in it, it's the it's a really really short version. But yeah, on the first day of kindergarten, Todd asked me if I wanted to be best friends, if I wanted to be his best friend, and I said yes. And that picture during that story actually is a picture of Todd from the first day of kindergarten. You his can mother see how much of a fan of, of school he is. Yes, he's very happy. He's very excited, and he's told me that his mother's advice was go to school and make a best friend. And he saw me wearing Ninja Turtle garb and said, that's the guy. And here we are all these years later. Ninja Turtles. That's a, the that's best. a mistake right there. <laughs> They're the best. Hey, Power that, Rangers are much that's better. A, no, Power Rangers are trash. This is the second show in a row you brought up <laughs> those damn Power Rangers. You keep that trash out of here, Michael. <sighs> but it goes to show you that that was the basis of, of our friendship that now, however many years later, 30 years later, is still going. So Power Rangers is a strong, solid foundation. I mean, damn it. Yeah, you're right. Turtles. You're absolutely right they are. Ninja Turtles is a strong, solid foundation. You see what you've done with that, talking all that Power Rangers trash? Power Rangers, number no. one. Power Rangers trash. All right, what do you got next? Uh, I think uh, we got one about... <laughs> Well, you have made fun of yourself, it appears. I was going to say, I hope it's the same one I've got on my notes. Because if, you, if you're watching this video and you go to 1 minute 20 seconds, you're not going to see this guy that you see right here on the G-Chad video. You're going to see fat, hairless banner. Because, uh, boy, I was living high on the hog, drinking a lot of beer back then. And, yeah. Uh, a lot, yeah. A lot of, uh, what do you call those things? Chicken voila. 
Yeah, a lot of chicken voila, a lot of a lot of uh, frozen processed foods, and uh, it showed. <laughs> I didn't know. I was just I saw. I fired. I was like, God damn, who is that? <laughs> Well, I, and see, I, well, you also, I also see later the uh, uh, Finn as a rail uh, 20, <laughs> 21 year old <laughs> Maggle. You might not even uh, have been twenty. You might, yeah, the, you, or you might have been twenty at the time. Because I think when I first met you, you were not yet twenty one. That's or correct. Just yeah, and uh, so uh, yeah, you might not even been twenty one years old when this was made. I was a young, um, young walking five miles a day in college. Uh, you know, not having any trouble. But that that lifestyle has has since taken a turn. Well, I also I did not put this on my notes, but if you're still at one twenty, uh, one minute twenty seconds, you'll also notice I have this mole on my head, and I've got a snaggle tooth. I've had a lot of work done over the years. <laughs> so, yeah, he had plastic surgery. <laughs> not really. I had a mole removed from my head, and I got my teeth fixed. But <laughs> like, I forgot I was, about that mole. Yeah, it was man. I was like, I, as soon as I saw, I was like, I. That's honestly like, it could be maybe my cousin or my brother, but I was like, that's that does not look like me anymore. So yeah, it was kind of shocking. We were the Goatilis brothers at that well, point we were. in time. Yeah, we were. Yeah. Actually, during this time, the only one with facial hair is Corey, and I'm looking at it because I've got it pulled up on my other screen here. He just barely had a goatee at the time. He that's used right. to have a real thick, but his was just kind of a... a, a, a stubble goatee at this point uh but yeah none of us were sporting facial hair and now Corey's the only one that doesn't have facial hair That's right. the four of us. <laughs> so strange yeah. strange to think about so the next thing that i noticed at a minute 25 is i don't think i've ever ever actually heard this story but at 125 you talk about the cartoon of todd yes. how did that um, come to be so Back in high school, so from 2000 to 2004, uh, I, for some reason I got into playing with uh, Flash. It's now Adobe Flash, uh, but it used to be Macromedia Flash. Aren't they killing that off soon? Yeah, it's well, Google Chrome is going to stop supporting it in December. Uh, Apple tried to kill it off a long time ago because right. iPhones have never, iPhones, iPads have never supported anything with Flash. Because they, uh, what's his face? Uh, Steve Jobs said it was a dead technology back in like 2007 <laughs> or whatever when he announced the iPhone. Um, but it, I mean, he, he he was a little early, but he's not wrong because nobody's <laughs> using it anymore apparently. But it was, I, I did very, very crude and not, <laughs> and by that I mean not <laughs> peenies and vaginis, but very, very simple animation. And I took a group photo of all my friends and cut their heads out and then drew animated bodies on them <laughs> and then made this little cartoon. It was called The Prep Show because we were we were called preps because we didn't wear camo and uh, we wore like sneakers instead of boots. Gotcha. Uh, so we were preppy. Uh, so it was me and all my preppy friends that uh, and it was just... and. They were dumb, and that you know it was it was kind of like you were talking about uh, Ben Wyatt's animation uh, of all this work that goes into it for a few seconds. I would work on these things every night when after school, like every day when I get over from school, I work on a prep show, uh, like the first one, and I worked you know two weeks or whatever, and it's like you know a minute and a half long or something <laughs> like that. Um, and again, it was very very crude, very like there's not like they don't do walk cycles or anything. They just they kind of slide across the screen. It's even less than like early South Park, if that wow. makes sense. Like, yeah, Cartu uh, like um, construction paper South Park. Even yeah, I mean, they, they, even the construction paper South Park moved more than these characters actually did. They really just slid across the screen. <laughs> there were text bubbles, and then that was it. Like they, you know. Uh, they weren't really articulated, <laughs> so <laughs> um, that was the prep show. And Todd, I don't remember why, but the shtick with Todd was he would get stoned in every episode. Uh, um, that sounds and, like a tally. <laughs> well, he, well, I think this was pre tally, but I, I don't. I'd have to look that up. But he, I think it was because he in in all the the prep show cartoons, he wears this beanie, um, and it was an Adidas beanie. And I think we used to joke with him that he looked like a stoner when he would wear it. And I think that's I think that's what it was. But again, that's been however many years ago. Uh, but yeah, that was there. I, I did like eight or nine episodes of the prep show. Um, 
and it was it was a lot like kind of what we do now uh i would make them for a very small audience and then bring it to school and that group would all watch it because this I, I i didn't i couldn't put it on the internet at the time we finally did put it on a website but are those uh, lost I, forever though they still exist i still have the swf files nice um, on a disc but they uh like the website that they were on um it was like an angel fire website i don't know if you're uh, an angel fire yeah. so yeah that's that's dead and gone um but that was the prep show and that was yeah so I, we wrote that in Corey wrote that in because I, I i don't think i did any of the writing on this uh if you did it was very very small yeah because i it's in the credits it just lists Corey as the writer so i i don't think i did any i think Corey added in the the prep show anecdote um so anyway, that's, no, that's now cool. you I, know. I hadn't heard that story, know. so I'm glad to share that with all six people that listen to this podcast. And they already knew that story, so because <laughs> the other people that listen to the podcast were actually in that cartoon. So <laughs> 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 you're the only one that didn't. So uh, and and building off of the the cartoon at one minute and forty nine seconds, uh, you guys talk about exposing Todd to the next class of incoming freshmen so what was the uh the class typical class size in high school with you all so and i know that you're being a smart ass because <laughs> you know the answer to this question smart ass um but yeah it was a small school it still is a small. well actually it's a lot bigger now they've consolidated so it's the, there's one school in that entire county now there used to be two uh, there used to be two, but they've consolidated. So it actually is a much bigger school now, you jerk. Um, but at the time when the schools were still split, uh, like our when Todd and I graduated, they, there I think there were thirty six of us in that entire class. So our we our their senior class was thirty six students, um, and I think anywhere upwards of thirty was a was considered a big class. So that still boggles my mind every time I think yeah. about it. Because I graduated I, with probably ten times that amount of people. Yeah, I you know the shirts that you would get like as a senior have like your class year and everybody's signature was on it or whatever. <laughs> I remember I wore mine in college one time and somebody asked me what club that was. Like what they're like oh what what was that what club was that and I was like no that was that was my whole class I'm like what. <laughs> so I was like yeah yeah. I think my wife graduated with like. 10 t- or I'm sorry like 100 times that amount of people yeah or something uh, ridiculous I was actually and we talked about this in another podcast I think uh I, I, during pandemic the dark times I've been transferring old home videos and I, I transferred my sister's high school graduation and mine and I think they were both done before 8 p.m <laughs> I think they started at maybe seven you know <laughs> like because it's it didn't take that long you know, you're that would have been out. awesome yeah like that's I, I never understood like when I lived in uh, Roanoke and they would have the, the graduations for the high schools at like the civic center and they would have to alternate. And I was like, what are you? And there was all this traffic. I'm like, what is happening? Like it's graduation. <laughs> I'm like, what? So this is not, this is not my experience. It was like, you know, it was the same amount of people for a basketball game. We got it another quick. Uh, so yeah, pretty small, pretty small upbringing. Yeah. And that, that led to a life of mischief for Todd. Yes. With no one around to it let him down a wrong path. <laughs> build his positive traits. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> he had no positive influences. <laughs> Only angst. So I think you you have a note at two minutes and seventeen seconds. Yes, I do. At two minutes and seventeen seconds, if you're following along or if you're watching the video, or even if you don't care, uh, at two minutes and seventeen seconds is the first appearance of one Mr. Dustin Carter who used to be uh, in our circle. We haven't seen much of Dustin in many, many years now. But uh, he used to do some videos with us every now and then. You you basically kicked him out. Um, I because, apologize. No. <laughs> actually, did you ever even get to meet him? I did. Yeah, we met shortly after this video was made, actually. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, because I know we, he, we had to shoot his section of this video separately. He couldn't do it the night we were all shooting it. Um, yeah, we, well, we shot it in Roanoke. I think he lived in Radford at the time. Yeah, yeah. So it was a little but, bit uh, of a travel. It was, yeah, it was a scheduling thing because I, we, the four of us all shot our talking heads together, you and Todd and Corey and I. And then when Dustin was available, we 
took him over and did the green screen shoot with him, just the three of us. Um, so yeah, Dustin used to do a lot of videos with us. Well, not a lot. He did a few videos with us and you know what? He was really good. Um, yeah. Out of all of us, I feel like he had the best. He, he was very natural. Right. Uh, yeah. I think he, if he had wanted to, he probably could have done probably bigger, uh, things than Ride That Donkey Productions videos. Uh, could he as have far been as that. in a commercial for Montanos? He, yeah, he probably would have gotten that job. Uh, yeah. Um, no, there was only I, one man for that job. <laughs> I think he had the potential, uh, but I don't. I don't know that he was interested. But he he was always down to do these, and he did a good job. So uh, yeah. yeah, we don't see Dustin anymore. But uh, there you have it. He was in the circle, and he made it into the video. And he actually has some of the best lines throughout the whole thing. If he you does, that was good writing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Corey, Corey Corey was knowing how to write for uh, Dustin very well. So. You talk about next. You talk about at uh, two minutes and twenty two yes. seconds a stolen YouTube clip. Yes, at two twenty two, Dustin is telling a story about Todd streaking at a football game, which again never happened. Uh, this one, this is not one of those stories that had some basis of truth. Um, but I'm like, man, what do you show for a streaker? <laughs> uh, and I googled, you know. <laughs> streaking at a football game or whatever and this clip came up and it was so far away and it was so grainy and the camera work was so bad i was like oh this is perfect like <laughs> nobody's See, I gonna know that was some kind of like professionally done video that you had ripped off of some tv show or something but that's crazy nope. No, that is uh, that is I, from some YouTube video that I found in 2011. I don't, I, I did not credit anybody for it, but I, it fit the need. Uh, I, I, there's not a lot of stock footage uh, that I could find of of football game streakers. Um, plus, like I say, I needed it to look like it could be Todd. Uh, it worked from far enough away and and really low quality video. It could be. It was not, but it could have been. So yeah, that was another. So ripped off random people's baby pictures to pretend that to pretend that they were Todd, and I ripped off some guy's the highlight of his life streaking at a football game. <laughs> I'm sure that was the highlight of his life. Probably. Like Do you know if it. that guy did that guy use a penalty flag as a loincloth? He, I, I could. It looks like he's holding something in front of him, but again, the video was so low res. I, I don't know, but. I, uh, When's the last time you saw a streaker at an actual sporting event? I have I never seen a streaker at an actual, like, not in person anyway. I, I've only ever seen clips of, like, I've never even actually seen it happen while watching an event. I've only ever seen, like, clips of it. So, so. I have a streaker story. I, oh. went to, I went to an NFL game in Cincinnati with my uncle. Um, the Bengals? Yes. My favorite team was the Packers. And they were playing the Bengals, and so uh, he happened to procure tickets and invited me to come up. Uh, that was also the first time I ever flew on an airplane oh. um, when I was in high school. So uh, I didn't fly the... on an airplane until I had graduated college. So. Wow. <laughs> anyway. It, well, it, so it was the fourth quarter. The Packers were down by, I think, six. And Brett Favre was still playing. He was the quarterback. Um, and they were on, like, the 30-yard line driving to go score a touchdown. They had to score a touchdown, an extra point to win. And it was third and like 12. It was not a good situation for the Packers. But um, he's in the shotgun. He's getting ready to take the snap. And all of a sudden, I, I look out the corner of my eye, and there's this something on the field that's not a ref. It's in an orange shirt because the Bengals colors are orange and black. And I was like, what is going on? And then the whistles start blowing, and uh, they snap the ball to Brett Favre, and he's just standing there with the ball like in his hand like this. And this guy runs up to him, grabs the ball, and then just starts running the other way down the field. Um, so he wasn't naked. He had oh. on clothes, but he he got onto the field. He, he jumped. The field. Yeah, he jumped over the wall onto a scissor lift, and then climbed oh. down the scissor lift and ran onto the field. Uh, and it ended up uh, disturbing the Packers so much they uh, failed the third down, and then they failed the subsequent fourth down and lost the game. Mm. So. <laughs> So I was not happy, um, and I f came to find out that that guy's name was Craig Nall, uh, or something similar to that in the newspaper the next day. Oh, wow. Uh, if you're still around, you ruined my first NFL experience, <laughs> and I hope you enjoy that for the rest of your life. 
Well, I know that you no longer root for the Packers. You're more of a Tampa Bay fan. So. That is not accurate. <laughs> I'm anyway. just glad I'm not a Cowboys fan. Oh, what? I can think of a few people that might be very upset to hear that. But so moving on. Yeah, well, we actually, we timestamped the same moment twice, you and I both did, it for different oh. reasons. Okay. So, my question is to you... Is this 2.35? It is. It is. I'm sorry, it's two minutes and 35 seconds. Okay. What is Todd's, what is the worst heckle you've ever heard Todd give an opposing team? Uh, I, I, this was all made up, um... So I I don't I don't know that I've ever really heard Todd talking trash to another team like yeah I I don't think I have I don't think I have either as many football yeah. games as we watch together he's usually just like mad yeah he he's he's a very passionate fan because Virginia uh, Tech loses often <laughs> yeah um but yeah he uh I, I can't I don't think I've ever so yeah there was no actual heckling um because actually. Todd continued playing basketball. So in this story, he actually would have been on the team, but for the purpose of the story, he wasn't on the team. Well, you so, should tell everybody why you quit the team. <laughs> yeah. Since you just found out about this recently, <laughs> uh, thank you for bringing it up. Um, I played basketball. I played little league all through, you know, elementary school and then played and at our school, you were in high school in the eighth grade. Ah, you, there okay. was no middle school. Gotcha. You went seventh grade was elementary school. Eighth grade was high school. So we had an eighth grade, which I guess most would have been the other boy, you know, the eighth grade boys basketball team was yeah. our, or would have been other schools, middle school teams. Right. Um, but we were, I, it was a kind of a weird setup. But uh, anyway, I played basketball in eighth grade. The, so once, you know, the next year you would play JV and so I go out for JV conditioning and, you know, that's, you know, if you don't know, that's where you do all the running and, you know, you get in shape for basketball season before this, even it's pre tryouts and everything. Um, and the first day of conditioning, uh, another guy named Chris, he, he was in front of me or he, he was, he ran and did, we were doing layup drills. I was in the back of the line. He finished his layup and he came and he got behind me and we were using these basketballs that had like all the grip rubbed off of them you know they're real smooth yeah um and it was you know it was fall i guess so that the air is more dry and uh so he had dribbled down did his layup and he came back he was full of static electricity and he went to put his hand on my shoulder like kind of pat me on the shoulder and when he did this like spark like jumped <laughs> from his hand to my shoulder and it like popped and so i jumped and he like we were both like whoa well, the basketball coach sees this, or I don't know if he even sees it, but he just hears and just knows that we're screwing off. So he makes us run the rest of the practice while everybody keeps doing drills. And I got so pissed off, I don't know how many <laughs> laps into it, that I just left. I was like, fuck this, I don't need, like, so I'll just leave. Because I was so mad that he made me run. for because And it, we weren't screwing off, it was just like, that was kind of nuts, and we reacted to it. Uh, I was so mad, and I, I was I was angry with him for a long time. And then, of course, years later, I realized, you know, it was basketball conditioning. I was going to run the entire practice no matter what. So my punishment was I just started a running a little early. Yeah, could have I could have been somebody. Uh, but yeah, like so, it's it's one of those <laughs> you, you think you know everything moments. You're like, you're not going to make me run. I'll tell you, I'll quit. And then you're like, you know, you realize it was conditioning. You were going to run the whole time anyway. So. I did not continue Classic. playing basketball. Classic. Yes. Plus, I was no good. So, Well, who was actually good at basketball in high school? LeBron James, uh, probably. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what what is your... Oh, we have we have Corey. We have a yes. mention of Corey. Um, uh, the way he, he interacts with the camera. <laughs> at 2.35, Corey mentions a... Uh, an air horn, and he does the, the <laughs> like eh, bam, 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 DJ Fern. Um, and that was at my behest. I, I directed him to talk with his hands and use his hands, and he, he he did not feel natural doing that at all. But I was I was trying to loosen him up a little bit, you know, make him more natural and uh, 
So yeah, you talk with your hands and do make like an air horn. So that's my bad. I suggested that Corey make the air horn sound or the air horn gesture with his finger. I think it worked. I think it worked. I knowing Corey, it just feels very unnatural. Forced. It, it's it's not. Yeah, it's and and since I was there, I know that I made him do that or I suggested he do it and he tried it. And then probably even if even if I felt like it didn't work back then, I was probably like, I'll show him, and I used the take where he did it <laughs> instead. <laughs> So sorry, Corey. Well, I'm I feel bad. like I feel like this is common between you and I uh, in person. We both talk with our hands a lot when we're telling stories and and whatnot. Like I'm doing it now. You just can't see my hands. Yeah. Yeah. Um, You're also not wearing pants. I am not wearing pants. Pants are for losers. Well, um, stand up, prove it. I will not. <laughs> All right. Anyway. So. <laughs> so. So we talked about Corey talking with uh, talking with his hands, but two seconds later, at t- two minutes and thirty uh, seven seconds, um, we we meet our hero, our title character, Todd Scott. Todd Scott, yeah, that's right. This whole video is about him, and there's there's a still image of him at the beginning, the title card, but you don't see. Well, I guess you see the the picture of him as a uh, on the first day of school, but you don't actually see. Or hear from Todd until two and a half minutes into this thing. And uh, I don't know, did you take note of what his lower third, how he was credited? Uh, I didn't, I don't remember that. It says, and it's still one of my favorite, it cracks me up every time, and it's such a stupid, simple joke, but it says, Todd Scott, local madman. <laughs> so, he was, there he, he was a local madman. Yeah, well, yeah, for the purposes of this story, he was, he was a... a uh, an insane person. Um, this is this is pre beard Todd. This is uh, pre super fit Todd. So <laughs> this is this is like this is this, I'd say this is between emo Todd and buff Todd. Yeah. This is this is like that transition. Yeah. Shortly after that, we were roommates. Todd and I were. Yes. Um, and yeah, I remember these days. Yeah. Vividly. So. Yes. So we see Todd, and then. At two minutes and 49 seconds, he does what we like to lovingly refer to as the Todd laugh. <laughs> you can tell when, because the, the why I put this in my notes was because we actually had to do something to make him, he can't like fake it. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if you remember, we were he having to He tried to, to fake it, it and it was garbage. Yeah, it just didn't, it's not right. So you have to do actually something to make him laugh that hard. And I can't, like you and I were... I don't even remember what all we were doing, but I remember we we were struggling to make Todd laugh that hard. <clears throat> we just let the camera roll, so I've got all this like raw footage of like <laughs> these fake Todd laughs, and then finally we do something that works. And I feel like we got some pretty good ones. Uh, we did like this outburst at two forty nine, and then uh, when they keep telling the story um, about. And- uh, the the pants yeah uh the the little burst there that one that one's really good too for all of your supposed editing mistakes i thought that was well it really well well sliced in there it was it it worked well but it was written that way too yeah so it the the writing was you know the it was written to be cut like that um but the uh yeah that his we we were successful in getting genuine todd laughs but we had to work at it (laughs) we did because yeah. usually well, that that high pitched like kind of really frantic giggle usually only happens when like something completely unexpectedly funny happens. <laughs> uh, he can't he can't just do it, but it's usually you know in a, in a, like a moment of chaos or something or something just kind of random. Uh, so it's it's like catching lightning in a bottle. It really is, it really is. So <laughs> the next thing we talk about. <laughs> Uh, is at three minutes and thirty three seconds, um, and th- this today this would get you a TV fourteen rating on Netflix. Yes, it is actual tobacco usage. It is actual. It is not a stage cigarette. Um, the context of this whole thing is they're telling an embarrassing story where Todd pants to Dustin, which again never happened, um, and <laughs> Dustin storms off. And when he comes back, like he's you know he's he's calmed down and he's ready to continue the interview. He's got a cigarette. And he takes a draw and blows it, and it's uh, you know it looks really good. What gets me the most is that it actually because this was all shot against a green screen, 
so the smoke shows up really well, even though probably a lot of it got keyed out because it, you know, it took on the green color. Yeah. Um, but that was something I noticed watching this. I was like, man, I, I, the cameras must have been good enough to catch that because I was like, that was, uh, I figured we'd lose a lot of that smoke just thinking about it now. But, uh, the, so yeah, he was actually, and if I recall, he actually stepped outside to take a smoke break and then came back in. So we were like, we'll just take, you know, finish that cigarette. Cause when we had him throw it out, uh, cause we were inside, but, uh, well, and I think the Ember really showed up really well when he, yes. Uh, when he took the drag there, yeah. um, that was really it was like, he knew what to... he was doing. Yeah, not to glorify smoking, but uh, it, yeah, it's definitely not glorifying. Smoking it, however, is bad it, kids. It it always looks really good on camera. Yeah. It, like it, it's not good for you, but it, it for whatever reason, smoking on camera looks really good. It just is, yeah, like that when you when you inhale and that tip glows and then the smoke just rising up. I don't know. It's just a good look on camera. So the light hits it just right. And anyway, so if you watch camera if you watch stuff. this video. And submit it to Netflix for consideration for a series because they'll consider anything. Yeah, uh, <laughs> we'll get you TV fourteen automatically. Okay. okay. For smoking. Yes. Which I believe you tried to rate the first episode of uh, Group Chat After Dark <laughs> TV fourteen, and smoking was one of them. I think smoking yeah. and brief nudity or something. Like That's that. right. <laughs> yeah. So, moving forward after. That wonderful conversation about tobacco. <laughs> at, at four minutes and 12 seconds, there is a picture of a letter from uh, local community college with Phil Community College. It's a real uh, place. It is a real place, but I think you should talk about how you got that letter and um, <laughs> what I, went into the creation of the yeah, Frontier I'm, gibberish. Actually, this is another one of those things that I was like, for all the things I did wrong, this one I was proud of. Like it, I was I was so proud of the way this worked, because um, that's actually I've print I, I typed up that letter. I feel like I looked up like examples of like disciplinary letters colleges have sent out, you know, for like some of the wording, and uh, like typed it up in like a similar format and everything, printed it out, and then kind of kind of crumpled it not really like kind of just gave me like little blemishes and things that like a real letter would have because i didn't want it to be like pristine so like did some things to it and then scanned it in as a as that you know kind of less than perfect image and then uh went and like highlighted the text and everything and zoomed it in again like it would have you know a lot of these documentary shows do that um that's not something i came up with obviously but uh, it's like, man, that worked out really well. And it looked really good. And I love the little creases and stuff in the paper. It's really subtle. But it's like, and just the way the text looks, because it's not, you know, made to look like a letter it actually was. And I yeah. still have it somewhere. I actually think I still have it in my binder here of donkey things. Um, but uh, that that actually worked out really well. So I, I had to throw that in my notes because I was like, you know, I was, I was actually pretty proud of that one. I didn't know that you had actually physically crumpled up the letter. That's I, yeah, I I did. I wanted it to look legit, like a you know. And of course, if you actually like, if you pause it and read the letter, um, it is not. <laughs> it is not like I think there's even some. It's like we don't want you coming to our school no mo, um, <laughs> that that type of stuff. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I don't I don't know if I still got it or not. I, I have the file, but I, I might not have the actual printed out letter. Um, but anyway, that I I was pretty pleased with how that one turned out because uh, it felt like like a real show would do it that way. There you go, so, like sixty minutes. Yeah, yeah, like real, uh, like real journalism. <laughs> Not real journalism. <laughs> so I'm a journalist. <laughs> parody journalist. Yeah, so I'm a parody journalist. <laughs> we want to talk about. So you and I both talked about this in our show notes here. Uh, but the the commercial is what we get to next. Um, oh no what, no! I, I've got a I've got a note before that. You do, yeah. Oh, that's right. At four twenty two, that's you kind of touched on a while ago. We get to see Baby Maggle. Yeah, this was an experience, and so I, I have a a fun anecdote about my experience filming that we'll talk about when I when I show up on camera. This is a preview that I was coming. Yeah, uh, as um. a 
as an outro for the first segment of, of this video. It's so long it has yeah. an outro and a, another intro. Well, it was every, and then this was done, uh, it, well, again, it was written like this um, to, to have a, like a coming up because that was, they always did, you know, a commercial break and they would tease the drama that was about to unfold, which <laughs> uh, if you move forward a few seconds, I didn't write this down, but um, at four, about four and a half minutes, there's a, a Corey talking head that previews the drama that's to unfold in the next half. And he said, I really felt like we were going to be burying our best friend before he turned 25. <laughs> and he's really, he, it was some good acting on Corey's part. Yes. He was, he was, he was dramatic in that moment. Yeah. And, uh, so yeah, we, we get to see the little, uh, the fresh baby face Maggle, uh, the, yeah, not I- the, the contact or the, uh, glasses list the non-bespeckled yeah uh, I had context at the time i still have context i wear them like once every three months so yeah yeah little baby maggle shows up there and he just he no matter what you do every line you deliver you're, you're about to laugh you can't help yourself <laughs> <laughs> that is accurate uh and also <laughs> it was extremely uh i felt very very stiff because i had no idea what i was doing so uh you're untested. Yeah. Um, well, that the break moves us into uh, the commercial, which is at four minutes thirty nine seconds. Um, this commercial is very rushed because I think <laughs> I did this. I think this was like the last thing I did before the video was finished. So, <laughs> of course, and I don't remember if it was written this way or if I just I was like, well, I got to put a commercial in there. It has to be a fake commercial. I don't, I don't remember, but uh, it's, of course, the character of the Grizzle. I know <laughs> one of your personal favorites <laughs> for Grizzle Flakes. And I do the voiceover for it, which there you go is the contrast between the professional voice actor and me. <laughs> Grab a box of Grizzle Flakes. <laughs> and I don't know if you notice it. And this was, I think it's Honey Nut Cheerios. It's always talking about how it can lower your cholesterol. Um. I was parodying that in this commercial and the text on the screen says may help lower blood pressure in less than a fortnight. This was pre Fortnite the game. Um, but may help lower your blood pressure. But I think in the, in the voiceover, I say your cholesterol. <laughs> so, it's one of the, uh, and they're you just didn't bother to go back and change it. It was too late. It was cause like <laughs> when you did this kind of stuff, it was like, then it would have to render and then you play it and you'd be like, Oh shit. So I can either go back and fix it and let it render out again to make sure it's right, or I can just leave it and, and export it. So, cause this was done in final cut, which was a different program than I use, you know, now. And, uh, it was at the time, the, the standard for, uh, video editing, but, uh, going back to it a few years ago, I was like, wow, this is like crappy beta software. Like it was, <laughs> it was, it had a lot of problems and a lot of these weird things. So you had to render things before you could play them back. And the more complicated it was, the longer it took to well, render. Like, right. So even though this wasn't really complicated, it had moving parts and things, you know, so that, that took longer to render. And on my little, you know, uh, ancient MacBook that I was editing on at the time, I, I was giving it yeah, all she's got. It. Yeah. I was like, I, I can't. Okay. We got to go on, you know, so it's, I, I got to get this thing done. So yeah, there's, that's, that's something that has always bothered me in rewatches of this. Is <laughs> I should have gone back and fixed that, but. I did not. Happens to the best of us, I guess. Uh, what do they say? Close enough for government work, I think. Yeah, yeah. There you go. So, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll we'll chalk it up to that. Um, I really don't have any thoughts about the Chris. Um, yeah, he's quite a character. He is quite a character. <laughs> he's been around a long time. <laughs> That was another that we talked about the inside jokes. I think he was kind of an inside joke he, to a lot of, yeah, a lot of he, people. And I think I, it could be because Corey created that character. I'm pretty sure because the first time I ever like it was in when we the first time we tried to do he's just a boy the film, and uh, which never got done either time. But I, I feel like Corey wrote that character for that movie, and so it's like. I don't know. He's like he was like a mascot for a long time. Was it like every every project we did, the Grizz would show up? Uh, so it's kind of like a going back to like Kevin Smith, like Jay and Silent Bob, 
it, they appear in like all the movies. So it was kind of like that. Like he would have some, 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 and he even had his own uh, web series for uh, for two episodes. He got it's called the, the Grizzle, Grizzle Files. Files. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, now he's dead. <laughs> That's more not really, not really. <laughs> so, so um, at five oh eight is your next. Your next timestamp. Yes, believe. which is another great mistake. Um, this is an actual picture uh, of Todd with uh, Pete Wentz, and I don't know who the <laughs> other guy is. Who's the other guy? Joe Troman. Okay, there you go. And Patrick and then, Stump. No, no, they're not. Uh, it's just Pete, and then it's Todd, and then it's this guy with a scarf, but it's not uh, Patrick. <laughs> and then there's. And the and for the purposes of this video, Dustin, right. and it's yeah. the worst Photoshop. Like his head is like see through, <laughs> um, and if you know Dustin, obviously this is not. It's his head on somebody's body, uh, so it, it is. I like I say, I wasn't going to point out all the mistakes, but this probably is the most. One of the worst photoshops I've ever done, and again because it was Russian, I was like, I can't, I can't spend any more time on this. Uh, but yeah, so Todd actually did. I was going to say uh, we should talk about that. Yeah, he actually won a songwriting contest from through MTV, and went for like a week on the road with Fall Out Boy. Went, I think he did like New York, L.A. and and Chicago. Yeah, they I did think. a they did a thing where they played. It was like three concerts in twenty four mm-hmm. hours or whatever. So one was yeah. in New York, one was in Chicago, and then one was in LA. Yeah. And Todd got to accompany. He did actually get to accompany them, yeah. and was yeah, featured he won in the, the contest. He flew the on there like the, the band's plane and everything, like you know. Uh, so it was pretty cool. He got to be on TRL, which was still a thing. Um, so we've, yeah, it was, yeah, we've scoured the internet for an actual clip of that. Yeah. We cannot find it, unfortunately. I think a little birdie told me that um, the misses might be able to get us access to that but stay tuned <laughs> g chad nation um, g chad nation uh but yeah so that was that was, todd is not photoshopped in this picture at 508 uh dustin is and it is I, not that i had to tell you that uh if you're looking at it but uh yeah so anyway and, and then so uh, i think we should tell everybody what todd's gamer tag is on xbox live no, we should not. You can't be revealing a man's gamer tag. That is true. You could, you could dox him, so we'll, yeah. we'll leave that a secret. Yeah, come on. Uh, so, <laughs> so uh, the next thing that I have to talk about is Pete Wentz. Okay. As, as many people know, Pete Wentz is a member of the band Fall Out Boy, uh, and he actually writes all their songs. Um, but uh, there's a fun fact about Todd and Pete Wentz that they share something in common. <laughs> I think I know what it is, but please. You should, what? We can take a guess. Is it their tattoo? It is their tattoo. <laughs> and Todd has a Pete Wentz tattoo tramp stamp right above his butt crack. <laughs> it is not. It's on his belly. It's not on his butt. <laughs> it's definitely a tramp stamp. He doesn't like to admit to it. It um, is not a tramp it's there. stamp. He got it on tour with Dustin Carter. They, Dustin Carter... Dared him drunkenly to get a tattoo of Pete Wentz's tattoo on his tramp stamp area. It's not a tramp stamp. It's on his. It's like on his lower abdomen. It I would never lie to G Chad Nation. It is a he tramp lies. stamp. He lies. I also share a tattoo with Todd. Yes, so. you do. <laughs> but it was not a. Well, it kind of was a drunken. He he made me promise, but it wasn't a drunken. It dare. is a dog humping a man in a it is hot not, dog costume. It is not a dog. It is. It is. It's this. Look. See, there's That's the dog. It. There's, there's the no dog. dog. Todd and I have the same tattoo because we're in love. You are in love. Yeah. But you couldn't you couldn't save him from a life of debauchery. I tried. I really tried. But it was probably my fault for making him the, the pot the smoking meat pot of uh the Yeah, you do admit to that in the video. Yes. Actually. So we were at uh five minutes and forty two seconds. At five minutes and forty two seconds, Corey is telling a story about Todd's antics while he's out drinking. And 
I believe the line is something like, he's always telling people, you better shake my hand or there's going to be a problem. <laughs> so I don't know that I've told you this story, but this this is a, a, an actual event that happened. Yeah, I uh, think not, actually, I think I have yeah. heard the story. <laughs> it was not to Todd. It was me. <laughs> I, we were out at a party one night in college and Corey was along and I was with several of my friends and we go to another friend's house and they're having a party and there's a bunch of people there we don't know. And for some reason, I remember parties. Yeah. Parties were great. Um, there'll never be another one again. (laughs) No, I was rip roaring drunk and sit down right in the middle of, of, of a card game. For some reason, there was a seat at the table and I just sit (laughs) down and I'm not, I don't know. I'm not playing cards. Uh, and there's this kind of big burly dude sitting beside me and he's like, that's my girlfriend's seat. And I'm like, ah, she'll be all right. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm really just being a dick. Like from the second I walk into this place and I don't know why, other than the fact that I was drunk and this dude easily, I was really drunk. So I would not have even seen a punch coming. Um, (laughs) And I'm just being really rude to him. And uh, I put my hand out or something to shake hands and be like, you know, what are we doing or something? Put my hand out. And he was like, no, nah, I'm good. You you want me to deal you in? And I was like, no, I don't play cards. If people don't shake my hand. Like, and I'm, I'm making a big deal about the fact this guy won't shake my hand. And I'm like talking him down. And this guy's like, you, I, I, I do recall the look of anger in his face. But he's like, God, this this guy's drunk, and um, I, I've always envisioned it, and maybe Corey could clear it up. But I've always envisioned that, like, I'm sitting here talking to the guy, and my buddy Corey and Anthony are standing here behind me, kind of maybe like pleading with the guy, please don't, please don't kill him. <laughs> he's really drunk, and I'm I'm just talking trash to this guy, and he, like I say, he could have easily destroyed me, even if I wasn't drunk, because he was, a, <laughs> if I remember, he was a pretty big dude. And, uh, so I just go in and, and start being a real jerk and, and telling him if, that if he didn't shake my hand, there was going to be a problem. <laughs> I don't know what that problem was going to be, but anyway, that was Your a real story. The floor, probably. Yeah. That, the problem would have been who, how I was going to get to the hospital. Uh, cause yeah, that, and like, again, never met this guy in my life, stole his girlfriend's seat, start did, just did dogging his girlfriend ever reason. come back. You she probably did. don't remember. She, I remember she did, and she was kind of standing beside him, and she kind of, and he was like, it's, and he was trying to kind of de escalate things. <laughs> because luckily, either he was just a really nice guy or he wasn't nearly as drunk as I was. Because had he been at the same level, I think we would have gone at it, and like I say, I would not have stood a chance. So, anyway, that was a real story about me, drunk me, causing problems at a party. Nice. So, yeah. Not that Drunk Todd did not cause problems at a party. We'll get to that later. No, Drunk Todd, is he's always wonderful. He never causes problems. So, at the the next timestamp that we have mentioned, uh, five minutes and 53 seconds, the... Is that right? Yeah, five minutes and 53 seconds. Sorry, I was looking at my phone. Um, The famous, famous resident of... Bradford at the time, uh, now he lives in Northern Virginia, uh, Deputy Dangerous makes an appearance. The one and only Deputy Dangerous. And and you guys, because there's, there's a photo of the three of you here, you guys are very brightly colored. Yes. <laughs> the yes, shirts we, are yeah, very that loud. Was, so they talk about Todd and I working shipment. That actually did happen. We worked together at Old Navy um, and at like, you know, the crack of dawn, we have to go. So the truck driver would bring the truck at like four o'clock in the morning, um, full of the stuff for the store that we had to put in there. And we'd show up at like six, uh, and have to put it away, take it out of the box and put it in the store. And, uh, deputy dangerous was our, uh, on the team there. And he was always obnoxiously excited <laughs> to be <laughs> at old Navy at six o'clock in the morning. And uh, we found these three terrible, terrible shirts. Uh, also, oh, these of, you these weren't shirts you owned. No, no, no. They were out of the uh, shipment. Okay. Yeah, some poor soul probably bought them after we wore them. 
Oh, but, actually, I think I see the tag on your shirt now that yeah, you mention it. Okay. Yeah, we found them in the shipment. We were like, these are terrible. And so we put them on, and, and hence that picture was taken. Yes. It is It is a picture and a half. But yeah, I saw, I was like, look at that. There's Depp. And he is now a Twitch streamer. And uh, so, yeah, we thought, I was like, you know, and I actually reached out to him, told him we'd be mentioning him on the podcast, and I'm going to send you to his Twitch channel. It's twitch.tv slash deputy dangerous. Yeah, he does a lot. Uh, I think I've seen him on there doing Destiny recently. Plays a lot of Destiny. Looked like, he used to play a lot of Fortnite. I don't know if he still does. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he he's on Twitch. He'll have his schedule posted and everything. So yeah, go check out Depp. And, and since he made a very brief cameo in this video from 2011. Yeah. So the next thing that we have, I believe is at six minutes and 20 seconds. Um, that is where uh, yours truly makes the debut appearance as a member of Ride That Donkey Productions. Is it at 620? I think so. Because I've got, there's the there's a picture of you at 618 is a picture of you and Todd. He's Todd's dressed as the french fries and you're the pumpkin. <laughs> okay, so I, I wrote down that timestamp incorrectly. Yeah, because the yeah. next thing I had was I, was, I wanted to ask you about this. It was 632. There's a picture of Todd inside a dumpster. Yes. Now, again, I was not part of this Old Navy crew. Uh, the, the, the fact that my phone would ring at 5 o'clock in the morning was true i made a note of that i wanted to talk about that story too yeah because todd's phone for whatever reason would pocket dial me on morning sea work shipment he was not i would get pocket dialed because that was back in the days where it was just you hold down a certain button on your phone and it called somebody that and for whatever reason it was always me that now, story is in here at like six minutes and 23 seconds or somewhere around there it's it's in there yeah because i'm talking about shipment and everything and 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 there's there's talking about and and then there's a picture of Todd just in the dumpster and you guys talk about these dumpsters a lot. What the hell was going on with the dumpsters at Old Navy and so, why did you get in them so often? So you know how I told you the truck would come and bring all the boxes and we had to unload the boxes. Yeah. Well, we'd break the boxes down so we cut the tape out the bottom and make them you know flat so they would be more manageable. Well, for some reason, old I'm probably breaking Old <laughs> Navy policy by telling you all this, but. <laughs> We did not recycle. Um, there was no recycling. It was just a dumpster out the back door. And if you went at the wrong time, you would actually set the alarm off for the store. Um, we had a funny story. Somebody did that once. And it was a silent alarm. And uh, our manager was going up to the door. And uh, two cops pulled up. And they had their weapons drawn on her. Like, sorry, we've received a report of uh, the alarm has been tripped. And it was really just us screwing around the back uh. doing something stupid. But we had to take all these flat cardboard boxes and put them into a dumpster, you know, with the hole on top and you throw the boxes in. Well, for some reason, they always would basically like paper mache over the top. And so you you keep throwing trash in and it would stack way up. Well, the idea uh, was, and again, uh, this was not Old Navy's corporate policy. They are... <laughs> <laughs> immune from from any kind of consequence that happened because of this but the policy that todd taught me uh because i started old navy after todd was that we had to climb on the rail of the staircase and then jump into the dumpster onto the boxes to mash them down into the dumpster uh, and so that picture is todd doing that one time and he, I, I guess he framed it like it looked like he was being swallowed by the dumpster. Okay, yeah, because I, I don't, I don't know exactly where I got that, but I'm like, I know this is an old navy. Uh, yeah, because there's like, I think there's a picture right before it where he's like flexing on top of the dumpster, and <laughs> he's inside the dumpster. Yeah, uh, yeah. One time, Deputy Dangerous and Todd built that paper mache over the top, uh, and they were like, "Hey, we need you to jump in the dumpster. We can't do it today because we weren't, we were injured, or so. I don't know what they came up with, but." <laughs> Uh, I was like, oh, okay, I'll do it. And so I went out there. That was a very good Magal impression, by the way. I, cl I climbed the <laughs> rail, and I jumped in, and uh, I hit the top of the of the box pile and just <laughs> right down into the bottom because they had not put anything underneath. So oh. my legs my legs dove right into the steel with the garbage bags and whatever else was under there. Uh, mm, that's and, cruel. Yes, they played a trick on I me. Mean, basically, Todd said you could see the, the rail of the dumpster. I jumped in, and when I went in, 
I disappeared. You couldn't see me anymore. So, uh -huh. yeah, that was always fun. He liked to play tricks on me. He would also fart inside boxes and then <laughs> pass them to me to open. Yeah, classic. <laughs> it sounds like a lot of work got done in Old Navy. Yeah, we, well, we always got uh -huh. done on time, you know. Well, that's good. That's yeah. good. I'm so, sure if anybody from Old Navy corporate hears this, they're going to have some emergency trainings with all their staff. <laughs> Granted, this uh, this was uh, over 10, well, no, no, almost 10 years ago. I don't know what the statute of limitations is, but <laughs> you better hope it's at least nine years. So, or at least eight years, I guess. So I I noted, and we talked. you talked about it briefly before, I think at 622 is where I timestamped it. My timestamps appear to be garbage, but... Uh, <laughs> You see, you see, uh, Todd and I are in the picture. Todd is wearing a French fry costume from yes. McDonald's, and I am dressed as a pumpkin. Uh, I borrowed those from my mom. That was my fourth grade and fifth grade Halloween costume. So one year I was French fries. I painted my hair yellow, and uh, the next year I was a pumpkin, and it came complete with a little... Uh, headband with a little pumpkin yes. top on it. Does have the little the little plug for the jack o' lantern. For but we wore that uh, on <laughs> Halloween because our neighbor told us, "Hey, we're celebrating a day early this year because the kids couldn't do. I think it was on a Sunday night or something, so they wanted to do it a day before." Come to find out, nobody adhered to that. That was not real. Uh, so we were wearing these stupid costumes for no reason. Well, why did you have to wear <laughs> costumes to hand out candy anyway? Kids, because the kids, man, you, you got to have the Halloween spirit. Mm. You can't just be Joe Schmo. You probably didn't I, even turn on your light. I was, if it was just me alone on Halloween, yep, I would turn my light off. I would go upstairs. I wouldn't even have lights on downstairs. I'd go upstairs and watch TV because like, I don't want any damn kids knocking on my door. Corey loved handing out candy. And he would dress up like Dale Jr., <laughs> he would wear like his Dale Jr. jacket and his Dale Jr. hat. And he would he'd sit down there and hand out candy. I would stay upstairs like I don't want these damn kids. Well, so we talked about your high school class. So I guess like for y'all growing up, Halloween was not a really or trick or treating was not a really big thing that you did, was it? Yeah, because it like there weren't like neighborhoods. Like we would yeah. go, you would go basically hit the same houses every year. It's like I'd always go to my grandmother's and my neighbors. And but even like my neighbors from my parents' house, you can't see. The neighbor's house from my parents' house. Yeah. But you had to hit all the spots. Like, you know, it's this lady that you go to church with. And it, so it was like you just, it was just basically my mom driving me around in a costume. Me and my sister. So I guess that, that was a little bit new experience when you had kids come to your house. Yeah. Yeah. Like nobody, like, cause it was usually we'd get like a group together of like me and like the neighbors up the street. And, you know, it's like we, and then we would kind of all go around to the same spots. Uh, but it was still your parents driving you around. Um, so anyway, yeah, it wasn't like a, you just get dropped off on a street and go ring all the doorbells and everything. We didn't have that. Gotcha. So, anyway, we've, we've digressed because now I believe what is your next timestamp? Is it uh, seven minutes and 19 seconds? I've got it. Six forty about the dark night. Oh yes. Yeah. You have one before I did. So six forty. Yes. uh, yeah, I think you you want to talk about a famous I, I movie just, that we've talked apparently, about previously. Apparently, this was very heavily influenced when this was written because The Dark Knight is quoted, really just one quote a few times, but there's there's reference to, like, uh, I think the line I say here is, some men just want to watch the world burn. And then a few seconds later, Corey says something about you and, and Todd. He's like, I don't know what he would do. He'd just hang out and watching The Dark Knight with Michael LaFond. That's right. Uh, yeah. so there's that. And then, uh, the narrator says something about it later. So it's like, there's a very close quarters, very close proximity story-wise. There's like three references to the dark Knight all in a row. So I don't know if Corey was watching it when he was writing this or, <laughs> well, it was I mean, Todd's obviously we all loved it. Was it was Todd's but, favorite movie yeah. at the time. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's still one of my favorite movies. Yeah, but, absolutely. Yeah. So but definitely, I know that the, some men just want to watch the world burn is used tw at least twice in this and it's pretty close together so that's i, I remember that because I, either i hadn't seen it yet or i don't remember whoops spoilers <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
Yeah. Well, or I had like heard of, of quotes of that, but I hadn't seen the whole movie. But um, yeah, it was uh, interesting how we <laughs> kept referring to it. I wonder what the inspiration was. Maybe we have Corey on as future guest. Mm. We might uh, we might know. Um, Maybe. So at seven minutes and 19 seconds, uh, you make reference to the uh, he put his beer next to mine story. <laughs> Yeah, which is another real story, and that one did happen to Todd. Um, there was a guy at a party that we wanted nothing to do with before we we knew that going into it. There was a whole backstory there. I'm not going to go into that, but we knew, and so this guy's going out of his way to be nice to us. I don't know if he was prepped that uh. we were going to not be nice to him, but uh, he was he was so Todd. We come, we show up to this party and Todd's got his beer of choice, whatever it was. I think it was Bud Light at the time, and it was the same thing that this guy was drinking, <clears throat> and his were already in the fridge and were already cold, and so he was basically like, "Hey, you know, put yours in. You can just grab out of mine, you know, because mine are already cold." Uh, and that way, you know, it's like he's not actually taking. You know, they're just trading out, basically. Yeah. Trading hot beers for cold beers cold that beers, will then yeah. be cold later, you know. So that you know, uh, and I don't know why, but that story stuck out, and we always and like we just always joked about it that he 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 wanted to put his beer with Todd's or to put Todd's beer with his and all that, because uh, he really was just trying to be nice. But we were predisposed to be not nice. Well, to didn't it make Todd angry that he put his beer next to his? Not really. No, we it was. I think we. That was what we kind of honed in on, you know, uh, as our, you know, forget that guy. Uh, we, we weren't really mad, but it was that was the story was, you know, he, he. The, I, th- I think something, now that I'm thinking about it, somebody must have tipped him off that it's like, these guys probably aren't going to like you, so you might want to be, because he was really overly nice to us uh, for somebody that we had just met. Uh, but anyway, so that's nice. the beer next to his story, because that, that went on for a long time. That was quoted quite a bit. You put your beer next to mine. Still quoted to these days. Yeah, yeah. Every now and then. So, you mentioned something quickly after that. After I mentioned the, he put his beer next to mine. Yes. But it is the seven minutes and twenty three seconds. You talk about the stock footage of police cars. Yes. um, Which uh, during this segment there is also, I believe, another Dark Knight quote. Yes. Uh, Todd says to the cops when they show up, "What took you so long?" That is the the next. uh, I have I have that, and then there's another uh, reference to some men just want to watch the world burn after that. But the the stock footage of police cars is another. I don't thinking about it, I don't know how much money I put into uh, the mostly untrue Hollywood story because I had to buy this clip because I no couldn't kidding. I couldn't find the shot that I wanted on like YouTube or whatever to capture. And uh, so I, I bought this this overhead shot of like cop cars with their light bars on. Um, and this at 723 is actually like zoomed in on the clip because I use it again later and it's like a wider shot. <laughs> so uh. it looks like a different shot. So I was getting my money's worth on that stock shot. So, uh, yeah, I, so I paid a hundred bucks for the, uh, the voiceover and then I don't remember how much I paid for this clip, but it was, I think it was the first stock video I ever bought was for this video. So nice. Yeah. I don't just, think I knew that. That's a new one for me. Yeah. Today. Again, like I say, I wouldn't. I I don't think I really told anybody because yeah, you know, why would anybody care? <laughs> so at eight minutes and six seconds, you wanted to talk about the explosion effect that you came up with. This is another thing that I was actually, and it. I I know looking at it now, I'm like, man, this. I could have done this a little bit better, but I was actually pretty pleased with the way this came out. Like. Because I had I had some stock footage of like fire and explosions and stuff, and like so as he's talking about you know flicking the cigarette to set off this bomb this bomb that he's built, uh, the little flame comes up in front of his face, you know, and then it's just the way it all comes together with the uh, the voiceover, and then boom, and the the fire comes up in front of the uh, the the picture of Todd, and Todd looks very stern in that photo. He does. Uh, like I, it's it's one of my favorite. I, I I zoomed in way too far on the photo because it's low res, so it gets really pixelated. But uh, just that the way that came together, I was like, you know what? There were there were some sh- there were some little glimmering moments of like, okay, 
this kid's gonna be all right <laughs> as far as editing goes it was like that that worked and i i i always like it if i do watch it to this day i always like to watch that part because i think it worked really well uh, the delivery of the voiceover line the 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 explosion and the way the screen lights up and the sound effect like it just uh, it was a good sequence so anyway it was good patting myself on the back a little bit and speaking of todd he happens to be blowing up the group chat uh g chat right now Um, well tell him we're busy i know he he has no respect for the arts or fine media such as as this one yeah so jerk (laughs) the next thing that i think i have is about uh Todd's eating a hot dog uh, in the storyline, um, and Todd is famous for a line about eating pre-made hot dogs. <laughs> we, we, about that. we were playing Xbox, and uh, one night, and he's like, "Hold on, I gotta go get some food." And uh, we were like, "What are you gonna get?" And he's like, oh, "I'm gonna eat some hot dogs." And we're like, "Oh my gosh, it's gonna take him like 30 <laughs> minutes to cook hot dogs while we're sitting here, you know, poking our fingers in our nose or whatever," and. Uh, he comes back like three minutes later and we're like, how do you make hot dogs in three minutes? He's like, oh, they're pre-made guys. They're pre-made, pre-made hot dogs. Pre-made hot dogs. What he was referring to was that he had had hot dogs previously that day. <laughs> so they were already cooked and all he had to do they was eat them up in the They were already cooked and dressed microwave. and everything. <laughs> he was just warming them up. <laughs> so I thought that was funny. <laughs> I um, we could share it with the world. The 7-Eleven eating hot dogs is a reference to... There was one summer that that was what Corey and I would do anytime we got together, <laughs> is we would go to Seven Eleven and get two hot dogs and a Slurpee. Oh my gosh, that is <laughs> that is a dangerous bet for your yeah. intestinal system. We were in college, man. We were invincible, you know. So uh, yeah, we would. That was like our our go to meal. Like it was like every like we would usually stay in the the area over the summer and we would just hang yeah. out all the time and it was like we went there was one summer we went through uh two hot dogs and a slurpee from 7-eleven that would be like what we eat when we saw each other and then we would go we would have uh the kfc bowls you remember oh, those the, the yeah. like mashed potato bowls we'd eat those it was like we each summer had its own like meal that we would eat together a lot um so Anyway, when when you were saying that about the hot dogs, I I didn't even think about the pre-made, but I was like, I guarantee that's a reference to the Seven Eleven hot dogs that we used to eat all the time. Nice. That that is shocking. I think that's the most shocking thing about this video <laughs> that you ate hot dogs from Seven Eleven more than once and on a we're regular still basis. Alive. We're still alive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah. Plus, uh, I think it was, I mean, they were cheap as hell, man. It was, it was, it was like, like two for two bucks or yeah, something. Yeah, I was going to say, it was like, I think it was like $5 to get like two hot dogs and a Slurpee. Like, it was nothing. And it might have even been less than that. But anyway. So, I think the last thing that is on my list to talk about is uh, Todd's cash register habits. <laughs> which are uh, later, I mean, I don't know if you want to uh, skip forward. I think I think we'll, we'll talk about this and then we'll talk about the... Uh, Closing sequence that you mentioned in your notes there. So at nine minutes and 15 seconds, it talks about how Todd was using the cash register and he was probably overcharging customers. Um, That is based in somewhat of reality. Todd was probably the worst cashier in the history of retail cashiers. Um, he, He would not provide quality customer service. And when people would bring, you know, questionable returns or complaints to him, uh, he did not put up with that, so uh, it was always funny watching watching Todd use the cash register with customers because he did not care if they were satisfied with their service or not, um, and <laughs> he always actively took a, a chance to avoid the cash register when he could. Yeah, huh. so so it was fun, but wow. The, the no, next thing, so you want to talk about the closing sequence. 10 minutes, 25 seconds as we get closer to the end of this video. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, 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 the closing sequence, just like mainly it's that, uh, let's see, 1025. Um, they, you know, we're kind of wrapping it up. Everyone's like, what's going to happen to Todd? And everybody's got their little one-liner. And um, the, the best one, because obviously they were, a lot of them were written for comedy. Uh, you know, Todd's like, oh, and you say you're going to kick his ass and all that, you know, like they were just written as, as kind of the punchline of the whole thing. And uh, 
once again, Dustin, he gets the line. And and again, going back to uh, talking about how good smoking looks on camera, this we got him to, he went for another smoke break. So we're like, bring it back in here and light this one. And when you do it, you know, take a draw off your cigarette for your closing line. And his closing line is, what does the future hold for Todd Scott? And he takes a draw and he holds it and he looks and he goes, it's a pretty damn good question. And he blows the smoke and just the way it looked like, it's so cool. And then the, the music hits and it's like, it fades out and it's over and uh, the credits start to roll. And I was like, gosh, that, you know, there's just moments of this thing that like, I think it's good overall, but like, I just like that little punch at the end, I'm like, the way Dustin delivered that line and how that line was written and everything. It's like, that just, it wrapped it up like perfectly for what it was. So and, and here's some behind the scenes trivia with that sequence. So my character who is sharing my name uh, wants to kick Todd's ass because I'm in prison or I was supposed to be in prison. That's why I'm wearing were, an orange shirt. <laughs> no, you were on the FBI's most wanted list. That's right. Okay. And, but you do look like you're in a crack den. Uh, for your background, because everybody had their little backgrounds, and Corey, uh, he, I remember he said he wanted yours to be like this, like rundown looking warehouse that because you you're you're on the lamb. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, I'm hiding out from, from the FBI. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. And so that's so, why yeah. I wanted to kick his ass because he got me on the FBI's ten most wanted. Yes. But uh, that was, it was a really good ending sequence. I agree with you. I think it was, yeah. It I think it did, like I say it was well written. The, the delivery of the line was good. Uh, just the, the way that smoke comes out when he finishes, like, cause you can even see it. Like I, I was, again, I was just in love with the way this smoke looks on camera watching this again. Cause it's, he's holding the cigarette off camera and you can see the smoke kind of, you know, wafting up, uh, just little wisps of smoke. And I'm like, God, that looks so good. Especially like I say, considering it was against the green screen. And then when he finishes that line and blows the smoke out, it, it just, everything about it looked really nice. I re- I think of all the backgrounds, his was my favorite to work yeah, on. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Cause I actually did, he, there's like a neon light behind him and I don't remember exactly what technique I used, but I would, if he crossed in front of it and he moved back, it would like, the light would kind of, uh, get flash, more intense, like, like yeah. not really flash, but like it would, it would fade a little bit and come out because that obviously the light wasn't really there, but I used like some the technique. It uh, was called nerd. Yeah, um, nerd, nerd. Right. But it, and it's like nothing that anybody would ever notice. But I, I put and I was like, I, lo- I just love the way that light looked behind him. And then so I was like, well, if he crosses in front of it, I want it to look like it's really there. So I, I put like this light effect in there to make it look like he was actually crossing in front, like the light was hitting the lens. And when he would get in front of it, it would block it and it would go back and it would kind of wash the lens a little bit. Uh, again, camera nerd stuff. But uh, anyway, so, so yeah, the way it wraps up, I just thought that was really cool. So I'm fast forwarding. Um, okay. Through a couple of things, but Marvin Skeens is actually Dan something. Yes, Marvin Skeens. He's credited <laughs> as the narrator. Marvin Skeens is a completely made up name uh, that we use for a lot of different things. There's a couple different made up names. Ride that donkey is used. Um, there's uh, a man named Stan Gabe that does not exist, and <laughs> Marvin Skeens also does not exist. And there's other like pseudonyms. Like mine was Ed Rippleberry. Um, we we just thought it'd be funny to put like. To make it look like more people worked on it. So everybody had like their pseudonym and their actual name. So it was like written by Ed Rippleberry, edited by Ben Johnson. It's like, oh, they got a lot of people working on this stuff. So everybody had a a second name. And then Marvin Skeens and Stan Gabe, we we made those up, but no, they were never assigned to anybody. So uh, yeah, anyway. So, so you want to talk about the special thanks section of the credits? Yeah, I was just going to say, it's again, it's an Easter egg if you're from the area. Uh, at 11:39, if you pause it and read some of the names, uh, you know the, a lot of them are just in there for giggles. They had nothing. To, most of them are just in there for giggles. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just it's a quick Easter egg for anybody that uh, wants to look at it. Well, I, I wanted to wrap this up with a, a quick anecdote uh, or a couple of things that you mentioned happened in real life um, related oh, to yes. this video. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> the first one is a funny story that you all heard. A second hand, I believe. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so obviously, again, as you pointed out at the beginning, this is called the mostly untrue Hollywood story. Um, which, you know, 
maybe four percent is true yeah like i say there's things that are based in fact but they're not none of the stories are actually 100 percent true um and we got word that uh a woman who happened to know uh someone tied to todd uh reached out and and she had seen the video and and expressed sympathy and 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 I believe her quote was, I really hope he gets his life together. <laughs> so <laughs> this poor woman somewhere. Apparently we did a really good job. Apparently. Yeah. It was, it was convincing enough that she thought that Todd was actually down some, some really bad path and uh, that she really hoped that Todd got his life together. And that is a joke that is still pretty frequent in our circle of friends that, you know, actually you made the joke in, in our actual group chat earlier today. Yeah. Um, so anyway, that was, I just, that one's, <laughs> it was actually we inspired by out. my rewatching of the, of the film. <laughs> yeah, I figured, but it's still, you know, it comes up every now and then. Um, yeah, we, we found out about it. I don't know how much, how long after the video had come out, but, uh, yeah, it was, uh, that was, it's like, well, I, you know, we, we did it. We made a convincing video. We made it look like Todd actually was a sleazeball. Well, and so. then this video got you all some attention at, uh, local establishment randomly uh well not totally randomly but fairly random uh we todd and i had been contacted by a local band uh we we knew some of the members um but they had reached out to us because you know they had seen this video and wanted they wanted to do a music video and they're like hey would ride that donkey productions be interested in doing a music video for our band and we're like it could be kind of cool. Like Todd's really, you know, musically inclined and I've got the production know-how or I thought I did at the time. Um, music videos are always a cluster. So don't ever, if anybody ever asks you to take part in a music video, don't do it. I was actually um, one yesterday. So you're too late. <laughs> oh, sorry. Well, I, I'm sorry you had to suffer through that. Um, but anyway, we go to a local bar to hear this band play and they had packed the bar with their, fans groupies. like their friends their groupies their you know whatever you want to call them they're, they're they're uh their circle of friends to you know help encourage the bar to ask them back because there's a lot of people they're getting a big crowd they're getting they're buying more drinks blah 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 so we knew some of the guys in the band we didn't i didn't know them all i think todd knew most of them but uh we, i didn't know a lot of the people that were there and uh we're, we're like at the bar getting a drink and this guy comes up to Todd and I, and he goes, Hey, are you Todd? He's like, yeah. He goes, you're, you're Todd from that video. <laughs> he was like, what? He's like the, the mostly untrue video. And we were like, yeah. And he was like, Oh, and you're Ben. <laughs> it's like, we got recognized. The only time I think in my life that I've ever been recognized by a stranger for for a ride that donkey video, and it was at you know, and again, not stranger, not not completely by chance. Obviously, the guy was there for the band, and they knew. I think they had been you know kind of promoting our stuff, um, but uh, yeah, it was we were kind of shocked. We were like, "This is crazy!" So we were like riding high because one guy in a bar came up to us and was like, "Aren't you that guy from the video?" <laughs> I am that guy. I am that guy. I am that guy. So yeah, we got we we got nothing out of it. Nobody bought us drinks or anything. Um, Classic. But we we I mean we felt like a million bucks. Just we're like we're here. We really felt like we were gonna take off after this because <laughs> we were being asked by a band to produce a music video for them, and people are starting to recognize us for something. We're like, we've done it, man. Like we have hit the big time. Like we're gonna be famous now. So you know, we were like. The music you know, video never happened. The music video never happened. Uh, they had a, a good concept and a good song. It um, was a good song. Yeah, I really like I still have the song on my uh, phone. Um, I really like that song. They had a pretty cool concept, but like the logistics of it. Like they, <laughs> they, 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 they wanted me to, to secure all the locations and everything. I'm like, we understand somebody's going to have to put some money into this. Yeah. Uh, like they wanted to shoot it in like a, 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 a jazz club type. Yeah. setting with like a stage and everything with like seating and everything and i was like well we're gonna have to number one find the place and number two they're not just gonna let you in there unless you know somebody like you're gonna have to pay them to use the location um and you know they didn't really have any money they wanted to put into it because we were gonna be kind of trading it out you know 
recognition for us, a video for them, that type of thing, uh, so that we weren't going to take money for it. But uh, I was like, somebody got to put some money into it to to make some of this stuff happen. And, uh, you know, bands are typically kind of flaky anyway, so especially local, you know, college kid bands. So they just, it just never happened. And on that note, nobody's putting any money into this podcast Hey, so, you're right. We're still not sponsored by anyone. So I think you've heard us talk about nonsense for long enough today. Yes. It was great nonsense, though. It and was. we had to do some of it twice. So Nostalgia. Um, well, and well, also I'm, I was late because I was watching the video three minutes that's before it yeah. started. Michael so, really worked hard on his research. I really beavered that part uh, of the... Uh, damn it. <laughs> the um, prep. Well, we appreciate uh, you listening, and you you can now definitely find us on Apple Podcasts. Yes, we are on, um, I guess it used to be called iTunes, now it's not. No, it is not. iTunes is no more. Uh, well, we are on the Apple Podcasts app. If you search Group Chat After Dark, you can find us, so give us a subscribe and a review there. We'd love it. Uh, smack that like button. You know, Smack that like button. Make sure to turn a, on the little gray bell. Give us a rating. We are also, we have the companion, uh, the video companion to the podcast on YouTube. Uh, so go over to Ride That Donkey Productions YouTube channel and click like and subscribe <laughs> and turn on the little gray bell. Yeah, Shouts out to Todd Scott and to Deputy Dangerous. Yes. And to the uh, maestro, Cory Maddox. Yes. Because this honestly is probably uh, amongst the, the hometown crowd that has always supported our videos. I think this is probably the one they still talk about the most. Um, yeah. So it, it's... It, 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 the legend lives on uh, but anyway yes Corey wrote a, a wonderful video it's a little long for my taste but uh, it was it was enjoyable but well, everybody's gonna say that about this podcast yes so, it is hi I am signing off I'm David pumpkins any question and he's gone all right well that is it for another episode of group chat after dark we'll see you next month but some other shit you don't want to hear about.